All right, section 4.3 is rational exponents. The first thing I want to look at is working with fraction and decimal exponents. So we looked at our, our exponent rules uh, last day, and we still do our exponent rules. Everything stays the same. So when we're multiplying, what do we do with the two exponents? We add them. But in this case, you have to think of adding fractions. Don't forget how to add fractions, right? We need a common denominator, which we have, 3 and 3, so that's good. And then when I'm adding, I just add the tops. 2 plus 5 is 7, and I get 7 thirds. So my answer is x to the power of 7 over 3. Everything stays the same. It's just remembering how to add the exponents when you have fractions. Here I have two fractions again, 1 fifth and 2 fifth. I'm dividing, so I have to subtract them. So I have 1 fifth minus 2 fifths is equal to 1 minus 2. Bottoms are the same, good. Negative 1 over 5. So I end up getting 5 to the power of negative 1 over 5. Remember what we do with negative exponents, we flip the value in front. So the 5, which is like 5 over 1, becomes 1 over 5 to the power of 1 over 5. The negative exponent only flips it, and then I have to the power of 1 fifth. Next, I have h to the 1 third times 2, or to the power of 2 fifths. Now, what do I do with these two exponents? Multiply them, right? Now, 2 over 5, this is probably what I would do. Because everything is in, is it would be easier to work with in terms of fractions. So I have h to the 1 third, 2 fifths as a fraction. Do you know what that is? 2 fifths as a fraction. So that would be 5 over 2. So now I can easily multiply these two fractions. So I end up getting h, and when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply straight across. So 1 times 5 is 5, 3 times 2 is 6. Next one I have x to the third. Well, I don't have any fractions this time, so I'm just going to leave it how it is. So first thing I'm going to do is the inside. Remember that the bottom is on its own, so it has an exponent of 1. And I'm dividing, so I subtract the inside exponents, x squared. And then I have to the power of 1 fifth. So what do I do with these two exponents? Multiply them. So I get x to the power of 2 times a fifth is, or 2, two times 1.5, sorry, is 3. Okay, so dealing with fractions is good. It's usually actually better if you convert the decimal to a fraction sometimes. And if you don't have any fractions, then just leave them as decimals because it's easy to work with as well. And you can do this stuff on your calculator too. All right, evaluating. Now, the way that you evaluate is when you're dealing with fraction exponents, the top number is the exponent. The bottom number, which is underneath, is the root. You can remember that because it's underneath root, just like roots are underneath the ground. How do we write that? Well, the way that we write it is we have the second root, and you know how to write a square root sign. It's the second root, so it's just the square root. The base, 9, goes underneath. The exponent of 3, I'm going to put out here. You could put it inside or outside, it doesn't matter. I put it outside though because usually what I do is I do the root first. It makes things a lot easier. So the square root of 9 is what? 3. And then I still have the cube. Now I just have 3 cubed, and 3 cubed is equal to 27. Notice how I did that without using a calculator. I didn't need a calculator because these are simple numbers. Let's go to this one now. I have the root on top. Sorry, that's wrong. Right, the root's on the bottom. Exponent is on top. So the root is 3 this time. So I have the cubed root, so I need to put a 3 there. And it's the cubed root of 8 to the power of 4. 4 is my exponent. The first thing you have to know is what is the cubed root of 8? If you really don't know, you can use your calculator. And your every calculator has a cubed root button, and you get 2. Or just think of what number times itself 3 times is going to get you 8. You should know a few of the cubed roots in your head because um, these will be questions on your provincial exam, like this, without using a calculator. So you have 2 to the power of 4. And now 2 to the power of 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. We've seen this one before, it's just 16. 
So just remember, exponent on top, root on the bottom. Write the root first, do the root first, then do the exponent. All right, something a little more challenging here. Let's look at these two examples. So the first one I have is 8x cubed over 64 to the power of a third. Hmm, what happens here? Well, remember what happens with these two exponents. They're just going to multiply. What about the 8 and the 64, though? Well, the 1 third, the power of 1 third goes for both of them. So in effect, you have this. 8 to the 1 third, x, and what happens with the 3 and the 1 third? What's 3 times a third? Remember, that's 3 over 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. So you end up getting 3 over 3, or just 1. And 64 on the bottom is also to the power of 1 third. Now, the top number is the exponent, the bottom number is the root. So I have the cubed root of 8 to the power of 1 times x to the power of 1. Powers of 1 you don't need to write. I'm just writing them to show you that they are still there. 64 is going to be the cubed root of 64 to the power of 1. Again, the, the exponents of 1 you don't really need to write. The cubed root of 8 is 2. If you don't believe me, you can check in your calculator. We've done this one a few times. And that's x on top. And the cubed root of 64, again, this is another one you should probably know, and they don't give you usually very big ones, is going to be 4 to the power of 1, which is just 4. I can simplify this fraction a little more. 2 over 4 is the same as 1 over 2. My x is going to stay on top. So 1x over 2 is my final answer. And notice, I could do all that without a calculator. There's no need to use a calculator. All right, let's look at this one now. Okay, this one gets a little bit tricky. I have x on top with a negative. I got y on the bottom with a negative. I got 9 and 16. I got a negative exponent outside. Oh my goodness, too many things going on here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to probably flip everything with the negative exponent. There's not really much I can do inside. There's nothing I can simplify. These two have a different base. So let's just flip everything right off the bat. I'll put the 16 y to the negative 2 on top. Everything. And the 9 x to the negative 8 on the bottom. Then my exponent on the outside becomes positive. <clears throat> now, this is kind of the way I think of these. Once I'm done with a neg negative exponent outside, on the inside, anything with a negative exponent is going to flip, right? The y is going to flip, and the x is going to flip. But here's how I think about it. The only things that have negative exponents are the y and the x. So they, those are the only things that flip. So the y is going to go on the bottom, and the x is going to go on the top. So I end up getting 16. x to the power of 8, I make it a positive exponent now, over 9, y to the power of 2. And because I flipped the y to the bottom, I also make it positive. So that's another way to think of flipping. And again, this is all to the power of 5 over 2. <clears throat> now what do I do? Now I have to do what I did in the previous exa example above. Not that, uh, yeah, the one just above. So the 5 halves goes for both the 16 and the 9. And what about the 8? What do I do with these two exponents? You multiply them, right? And again, think of 8 as 8 over 1. So 8 times 5 is 40. So I get x to the power of 40 over 1 times 2 is 2. And for y, think of the 2 as 2 over 1. And I'm multiplying the two exponents because I have an exponent to an exponent. 2 times 5 is 10. 1 times 2 is 2. Let's keep simplifying this. Now, 16 to the power of 5 over 2. Remember, the bottom is my root. The top is my exponent. So I get the square root a 16 to the power of 5, x 40 over 2 reduces to just 20, over 9 to the 5 over 2, again I have a root and an exponent, so square root of 9 to the power of 5, and 10 over 2 reduces to 5. This one I would probably use a calculator for, you probably wouldn't be asked to do this one without one. So square root of 16 is 4, I still have the power of 5, x to the power of 20 over the square root of 9 is 3 to the power of 5, y to the power of 5. And if you were asked to evaluate this, 
this, I would do this on a calculator. 4 to the power of 5 is 1024 x to the power of 20 over 3 to the power of 5, 3 to the power of 5 is 243 y to the power of 5. You could go through and check to see if 1024 and 243 have any common factors. I don't think they do. They might. You could check through just to make sure you could reduce it. Um, I'll leave that up to you to check. Here we have the last one. We've got 9 over 25 to the power of 1 fifth. Now, to the power of 1 5, you can do this on your calculator. <clears throat> you can go through and say 9 to the power of 1.5 and 25 to the power of 1.5. But this question might be a no calculator question. So I have to be able to, re to convert this to a fraction, just like I did above. And 1.5 is the same as 3 over 2. Because once I have it as a fraction, then I know what my exponent and my root is. It's hard to see in this form. So I have the square root of 9 cubed and the square root of 25 cubed. So that's equal to 3 cubed over 5 cubed, which is 27 over 125. And again, you probably should know 5 cubed and 3 cubed in your head. You should probably or realize the list 1 cubed, 2 cubed, 3 cubed, 4 cubed, uh, 5 cubed, oops, that's not a cubed, maybe even 6 cubed you should recognize. Definitely up to 5 though, for sure, in your head. All right, here's a question, evaluate for P. These questions are in your book. There's only a couple questions that I gave you like this. Basically what you need to do is you need to look at this and look at the answer, look at the exponents that you're working with, and figure out what am I doing with these exponents? Oh yeah, I'm multiplying them. So I have p times 1 over 5. Think of p as over 1. p times 1 is just p. 1 times 5 is 5. Now what should this be the same as? Well, that should be the exponent on this x, but it has to be equal to the exponent on this x. So that means that p over 5 must be equal to 4 over 5. Um, wait a second, that means that p must be equal to 4. And that's your final answer. So it's just a matter of looking at your exponent rules, seeing what happens, and making the exponents equivalent the same. All right, last one, working with formulas. Now, when you're working with formulas, they'll usually give you a formula with an exponent, and they'll ask you a bunch of questions. They might say, for an example, what is the value after six years? If this is like, say, an investment and you're investing, and then you have to think about, well, what does this amount here represent? Oh, this might be my initial investment. Whoops. So if we're dealing with money here, we're saying you're investing $1,500. This might be the rate at which you're investing it, and this might be the time in years. Okay. So if it says the value after six years, I know that my value for t, because that's time, is going to be equal to six. So I basically replace t with six. So I say volume or the value equals 1500 times 1 1.05 to the power of six. These questions you will always be using your calculator for. So 1.05 to the power of six and then I times that by 1500 so my investment is going to be worth $2,010 and we'll say 14 cents and remember this is money so put a money sign dollars always round to two decimal places always all right let's look at the next one so the next one says after six months oh wait a second this is months hmm how do I convert that to years so that means my t is going to be six months, but how many months are in a year? 12, so I have to divide by 12. So I know that this is going to be, oh yeah, that makes sense, right? Half a year. So my, my value of my investment is going to be 1500 times 1 1.05 to the power of one half. Now again, use your calculator. You don't have to do this in your head. 1.05 to the power of a half, which is 0.5 and then timesing it by 1500. 
So after half a year, six months, your value is going to be 15, 37, and 4 cents. And remember again, it's money. Okay, last one. Two years ago. Hmm, what do you think your value for t is going to be this time? You might have guessed negative 2. That's good. So my value for t is going to be negative 2, and that's what I plug in. So I get my value of my investment is 1,500 times 1 1.05 to the power of negative 2. Again, just using a calculator, 1.05 to the power of 2 negative. And this calculator, you put the negative sign after. And then you times it by 1,500. So you get 13.60 and 54. All right, so there's an example going through exactly how you work through given a formula and if, if you're giving, given lots of different questions based on that formula.